from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Well, hi everybody, John Walls here on theCUBE as we continue our IBM Think initiative and today talking with uh, Clemens Raymond, who is the global CTO, cloud and DevOps leader at Capgemini. And Clemens, thanks for joining us here on theCUBE. Good to see you today. Thank you, thank you very much. Nice to be here. Yeah, tell us a little bit about Capgemini, if you will. First off, for our viewers at home who might not be familiar uh, with your services, tell us a little bit about that and maybe a little bit more about your specific responsibilities there. So who doesn't know Capgemini in this system integrated world, in the IT world, uh, has been living under the stone. Eh? Uh, so Capgemini is a worldwide system integrator with, with offerings in all kinds of spaces and all areas there. Uh, my responsibility is mainly around cloud and DevOps, uh, taking care of our countries, uh, our delivery centers, have the right knowledge around cloud, have the right capabilities around DevOps, uh, to support our customers and uh, with their journey to the cloud and to a digital organization. Uh, yeah, everybody's talking about digital these days, right? And, and everybody. This yeah. magical digital transformation that's occurring that's been going on for quite some time. Um, what does that look like to you? And, and when you start defining you know, digital organizations and digital transformations, what are the kinds of things that you're talking about with organizations in terms of that kind of migration path? Yeah. So it's quite interesting to just start a discussion about how does a digital landscape looks like for an organization who wants to start transforming to a digital organization. And then when you are looking at that, I'm always starting the discussion with business capabilities. Uh, an organization wants to create business capabilities either to uh, interact and engage with their workforce uh, to make them work in the most efficient way. And what they are using for that are all kinds of different digital channels. And those digital channels that can be a mobile app. I'm working with my mobile app to connect with my work. I'm calling, I'm using Zoom, I'm using Teams and that kind of stuff. We're also using uh, chatbots for our IT devices. And that's what the normal workforce expect nowadays. All have to have all those digital channels to interact with the business. That's also on the other side, at the, the customer side, uh, organizations want to, to, to engage and, and grow on the customer side and have their nice interaction there. And again, they are using those digital channels, all the different digital channels, maybe IoT, maybe APIs, uh, to interact with those customers to bring them uh, the engagement, the interaction they really want to have. And, and in that transformation part, definitely they are looking at what kind of challenges I have with working with customers like this and working with my workforce. Now everybody's working from home, challenges with maybe with uh, connections and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But they also started to leverage and that's that's where the transformation and migration start with their, their on-prem systems, their legacy systems to, to move those kinds of capabilities and enrich that with cloud native capabilities through all kinds of enterprise solutions, uh, like the ones from IBM, for example, to expose that to their digital channels, to their organizations. And that, that's the landscape, how it looks like. And then we have the discussion with organizations. How do you want to engage with your customers? What kind of digital channels do you need? Uh, what are the business systems you have? And how can we enrich them and expose them to the outside world with all the enterprise solutions around them? And when you talk about a process like this, which is, you know, sounds holistic, right? You're looking at what do you have? Where do you want to go? What are your, what are your business needs? You know, which yeah. all makes great sense. Uh, but then all of a sudden you start hitting speed bumps along the way, right? Um, there are always challenges in terms of deployments. There are always challenges yeah. in terms of decisions and those things. So what are you hearing again from on the customer side about what are my pain points? What are my headaches here? As I know I want to make this jump, but how do I get there? And I have these obstacles in my way. Yeah, that's, that definitely. And, 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 and uh, the ones I explained already, uh, which are, are on the workforce side and on the customer side, uh, you want to have the engagements there, you ought to have the interactions there. And then you have that whole digital landscape, uh, which comes with some interesting challenges. Uh, how do I implement this landscape in, in, in the right scalable way? How do I expose my data in such a way that it is secure? 
uh, how do I leverage all the capabilities from the platforms I'm using, and how do I make all these moving parts uh, consistent, compliant with the regulations I need to work towards too? How do I make it secure? So, so those are, are definitely big enterprise challenges, eh? compliance, security, and that kind of stuff, but also technology challenges. Eh? How do I adopt those kinds of technologies? How do I make it scalable? How do I make it really an integrated solution on its own so that my platform is not only working for the digital channels we know right now, but they are also ready for the digital channels we don't know yet will start coming. Eh? That's right. uh, I wanna, yeah, those I wanna, are the biggest challenges there. Yeah, I want to get into that a little bit later too, because you, you raise a great point. Well, let's just jump right now. Uh, we know what the here and now is, but you just talked about building for the future, building for a more expansive footprint or kinds of capabilities that frankly, we're not even aware of right now. So how do you plan for that kind of flexibility, that kind of agility when it's a bit unpredictable? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and that's what every organization tries to be, uh, agile, flexible, resilient. Uh, and, and you need to build your system conform that. And, and uh, <clears throat> where we normally start with, you need to have a clear foundation. And, 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 and the foundation when, for example, when you are using the cloud for it, uh, every organization is cloud for it. Uh, uh, you want to have that foundation in such a way that, that those digital channels can, can connect really easy to it. And that the, the capabilities, the business capabilities created are done by product teams. Now, product and feature teams are creating those kinds of capabilities on top of that cloud foundation. And in that foundation, you want to put everything in place. Uh, what makes it easy for those teams to focus on that business functionality, on those business capabilities? You want to make it very easy for them to do it the right thing. That I always love to say that. That's what you want to put in your cloud foundation. Uh, that's where you are harnessing your security. Every application who's landing on the foundation is secure. Uh, you are embracing uh, a standard way of working, although not every DevOps team is like that. Uh, they want to be self-organizing and that kind of stuff. But when you are having 50 or 100 DevOps teams, you want to have some kind of standardization and provide them a way. And again, the easy way should be the right way to provide them templates, provide them technologies so that they can really focus very quickly on, on, on those kinds of uh, business capabilities. So, so the cloud foundation is, is, is the base mm -hmm. that needs to be in place. You know, you've been doing this for a long time and, 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 you know, the conversation used to be, you know, should we move to the cloud? You know, can we move to the cloud? Now it's about how fast can we move to the cloud? How much do we move to the cloud? You know, um, so looking at that kind of the, the change in paradigm, if you will, what are organizations having to consider in terms of, you know, the, the scale, the, the depth, the breadth of their offering now, because innovation, as you know, can happen at a much faster pace than it could have just you know, a very short time ago. Yeah. And then I'm reflecting again back to the easy thing should be the right thing. Huh? That, that's what you want to do for your, for your demos. I love that concept. <laughs> it's, 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 and, and, and that's what you should focus on as, as an organization. Uh, for example, what we put in place, uh, we put a lot of standardization, a lot of knowledge in place in what we call an in, in, in inner source library. And in that inner source library, for example, we put all kinds of scripts, all kinds of templates, all kinds of standardization for teams who either want to, to deploy OpenShift on that platform or want to start working with certain cloud packs that they can set that up very easily conform to the standards of the organization and start moving from there. And, and then in the cloud foundation, you have your cloud management, uh, the, 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 the IBM cloud manager, because organizations are definitely going towards the, the hybrid scenarios, different organizational units wants to start using different clouds in there. And, and, and also for the migration part, you want to have that, that grow from there. And standardization, inner source and having those templates ready it's it's it's, it's key for organizations now to, to to speed up and be ready 
to start juggling around with, with workloads eh, on any cloud where you want to. Eh? That, that's the idea. Eh? Sure. Now, now, so Red Hat's involved in this. You got IBM involved as well, obviously, in your partnership working with them. Um, talk about that kind of merger of resources, if you will, and in terms of how what the value proposition is to your clients at the end of the day to have that kind of firepower working in their behalf. Yeah, and that, that, that's, for example, <clears throat> uh, I, IBM is, is, is for us a, a very important partner. Uh, definitely on the hybrid multi-cloud scenarios where we can leverage OpenShift on, on, on those kinds of platforms for our customers. Uh, we created, what I said, uh, templates, scripts. Uh, we use the IBM Garage projects for it to create deployments for our teams in a kind of self-servicing way to deploy those OpenShift clusters on top of the cloud platform they, of their choice. And then for sure with the multi-cloud manager from IBM, we can manage that actually in the lending zone. And that's actually the whole ID. And you want to give the flexibility and the speed uh, to your DevOps teams to be able to do the right thing is the easy thing and then manage it from your cloud foundation so that they are comfortable that when they're putting the workloads in that whole multi-hybrid cloud platform that it is managed and organized all in the right way and that that's definitely where IBM, Red Hat, OpenShift comes in play and, and because they have already such a great tool sets ready they really think DevOps, that's what I really like. Uh, also with the migrations, it comes with a lot of DevOps capabilities in there, not plain lift shift, but also the modernization immediately in there. And, and that's what I like about our partnership with, with IBM, is, is, is they are DevOps in mind also, eh? that, that's, mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah, what about the speed here, just in general, just about the, uh, almost the pace of change? And, and what's happening in that space? Because it used to be you know, like these kinds of things took forever, it seemed like, right? And, or evolutions, transitions were, would take a long period of time. It's not the case anymore. You know, and, uh, things are happening in, in relatively lightning speed. Um, so when you're talking with an organization about the kinds of changes they can make and the speed at which they can do that, um, you know, marry those up for me and those conversations that you're having. And if I'm a, you know, a CIO out there and I'm thinking about how am I going to flip this switch, you know, convince me right now. <laughs> what are the key factors, right? And and how how easy, how right will this be for me? So as a CIO, you want to have your, your scalable and your flexible organization. Uh, probably at this moment, you, you are sitting with your on-prem system with probably a very large relational database with, with several components around there. And, and now you want to fuel those digital channels there. And a great way with, with IBM, with Red Hat, is that we can deploy OpenShift container solutions everywhere and then starting to modernize those small components around that big relational database. And we were starting to do that. We can do that really at, at light speeds. And there, there, there are, uh, we, we have a, a factory model up and running uh, where we can put in the application landscape of a customer and look at it and say, okay, this one is, is quite easy. We are running it to our modernization street and it runs into a container. And, and from there, you start to, to, to untangle actually the hairball of your whole application <laughs> landscape and starting to move those components. And, and you definitely want to prioritize them. Huh? And, and, and that's where you have discussions uh, with the business, uh, which is most valuable to move first and which one to, to, to move there. And that's actually what we put in place is, 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 uh, is the factory model to analyze an application landscape of a customer, having the discussions with those customers and then say, okay, we are going to move these workloads first, then we are going to analyze the code of these and then we are going to move these and we really start rocking fast, moving their workloads to the cloud and so that they can start enrich those digital channels you want to do there. Huh? Right. Well, a great process. And I love your analogies, by the way. You talk about hairball there. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it. Hey, Clemens, thank you for the time today. I appreciate hearing about the Cap Gemini story and uh, about your partnership with IBM. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. So, well, we have learned one thing the easy thing is the right thing. And that's the Cap Gemini way of getting things done. You've been mm -hmm. watching uh, part of the IBM Think Initiative here on the Cube. Mm -hmm.